Slippery, ugly and hard to catch. Cane toads have proved to be one of the country's biggest environmental blunders since they were released in Queensland in the 1930s. But the poisonous little creatures have accelerated their invasion and are now spreading quickly across northern Australia. Scientists have struggled to find any way to control them. Now they've turned their attention to saving what they can in the toad's destructive path. Claire Moody reports. At Umbulgurri in the far north of Western Australia, these Aboriginal rangers are on an unusual mission. Follow me down the road. Follow teams in the air and on the ground, they're trying to track down a native animal that they used to hunt, but now they're trying to save. This is Lizzie. She's a, a female. female. This is one of over 40 goannas. They've fitted with radio tracking devices. Ultimately, it's to buffer populations of goannas from the full impact of cane toads. I reckon he might be in a tree. Together with scientists, they've been monitoring the goannas' movements and offering them a taste of what's to come. At the end of this fishing rod is a small cane toad. Basically, we're trying to expose the goannas to um, non-lethal doses of toad toxin just before the front arrives. And, um, yeah, hopefully they'll learn that that's not a good thing to, to attack and eat and... Yeah, when the, when the large toads come through, they'll um, avoid them. As a kid, you might have encountered a vegetable you didn't like. Brussels sprouts is always a good one. And you are so affected by eating that, you vow never to eat one ever again. And that lasts with you. That's a learning experience, a taste aversion learning experience. So it's, it's a bit the same. If they eat a small toad, they f it it's, doesn't taste nice. They feel ill, but it doesn't kill them. Super toxic adult cane toads have left a trail of destruction as they march across northern Australia, poisoning a number of native species, including goannas. As the toad front comes through, you, you get this really large mortality. You know, bang, you know, you know, in a week to two weeks, to go, you know, you, there's goanna bodies everywhere. Found one. Not far away, volunteers have been trying to do their bit to slow down the invasion. With the help of state government funding, they've been collecting and destroying cane toads since they crossed the border into WA from the Northern Territory five years ago. So what we've got here is a male on top of the female, see that? And so when the female lays her eggs in those big chains, then the male fertilises those eggs. So. That's what they do to squeeze the eggs out? Mm. Oh, well, no, not really, Tyrese. <laughs> Tonight's hunt has been successful. We got a total of 34 females out of the system um, versus 26 males, uh, which means, uh, you know, it's less eggs, particularly for the fully matured toads. They're capable of um, producing about 30 to 35,000 eggs per female twice a year. Over the years, this community group estimates it's removed close to four million toads. But now their funding's been cut and Lee Scott Virtue, who set up this volunteer army, isn't happy. The reality is that if that you can mitigate the impact of the first wave of toads by getting, reducing their numbers, the wild, it gives the wildlife the native wildlife, an opportunity to become wary of the toad. It's an enormous, highly ambitious task, but Lee Scott Virtue isn't about to give up now. She and her husband are funding the effort on their own. Without community efforts, without preparing people ahead of the cane toad front, then we would be just absolutely inundated with toads. Millions of taxpayer dollars have been spent trying to find a biological control, but so far the toads are winning. They're now advancing five times faster than they used to, heading west at about 50 kilometres a year. There's been quite a bit of work done by CSIRO looking for a, a suitable pathogen that would affect toads and not native frogs, and they were unable to find anything. So at the moment there's no light on the horizon in terms of biological control for for toads. One, two. 
Desperate to find an answer, the volunteers are funding their own studies into one option which has already been dismissed by a leading university on cane toad research. It's still moving. But overseas researcher Jordi Groffin believes the lungworm parasite found in most of the toads he's collecting is worth reconsidering as a partial control measure. Even if it doesn't kill 30% of them, even if it kills 20% of them or 10%, it's more than anything else at the moment. What everyone agrees on is the toad's ability to adapt to new areas. They won't spread through the arid parts of Australia unless there's you know, major climatic change that favours them. But certainly under various climatic change scenarios, they will spread uh, right down into southern Australia. In the meantime, state and federal funding is being focused on other measures, including the radio tracking programme. As the cane toads continue their march across Australia, researchers here at Umbulgari are reporting early success from their experiment. Many of the goannas are already refusing to eat the toads. Like Nina, for example. That head flicking, when she got close and she's head flicking, that was, no, she just wasn't up for it. So she's eaten, she's eaten the toad and she's, we've never got to take, eat another toad. She's one of our star pupils. <laughs> <laughs> Claire Moody reporting.